Thank, well, thank you very much, Etienne, for this opportunity to have a chat. It yeah. is wonderful to meet you. Um, and I gather that your you started your career as a teacher of French. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I was a teacher of French in Hong Kong for a few years. Yeah. And how did you uh, how did you end up being in the university world and not teaching? Well, actually, I'm not in a university. I'm I'm a, I'm an independent consultant. You know. So, uh, but uh, you know, I was teaching French and. I came to think that French was not really important to learn. So I went, I went into computer science so I could teach kids something that was relevant to their life. Yeah. Um, and uh, then I became interested in the use of computers in, in education. Yeah. Actually, my first book was on, on intelligent tutoring systems, which is, uh, you know, at, at the time it was a big deal. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. And, and then, 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 then I was invited to join an institute where we were rethinking learning together and started to work with an anthropologist and started to develop a social theory of learning. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So could you define for us uh, what you understand in a short piece? Uh, what is, what, how would you define a community of practice? Because when I use that phrase with some people, they glaze over and just don't get it. And I assume that everyone knows what a community of practice is, but how would you, in a brief form, just encapsulate that phrase? So a community of practice is a, a learning partnership among people who have learned to do something over time and have developed a shared practice. So by practice here we mean uh, really a, a historically developed way of doing something. Right. And so that applies to, uh, I don't know, long-standing practices like making violins, and it applies to short-lived practices like kids on the playground developing a certain way of dealing with the school or something like this, or, or a street gang developing certain ways of, of living on the street. So. It, it applies very generally. It's not just a professional community. It applies to, to groups that have developed a shared way of addressing a problem that they face. So hearing you, I'm putting the emphasis on practice yeah. first and the community is actually secondary. Yeah, they, 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 they grow together. I don't know if... Yeah, I was focusing on the community until I heard you just give that definition, but... Anyway, yeah, yeah, it's really a community that is formed or around the development of a practice. Yeah, it is the practice that defines what counts as the community because basically a community ends up being what we call a regime of competence, hmm. which is a way by which members of that community recognize each other because they can see a competence in each other that makes them member of that community, you see? Wonderful. Now that's a lovely springboard. Um, my chief area of interest is obviously initial teacher education. Mm -hmm. and, and obviously knowing you started your life in, in education as well. Mm -hmm. um, my, my passion is to see the communities of practice develop for teacher educators. So we put students out into schools one day a week throughout the whole of their studies. Mm. So we're passionate about that. We call that our clinical teaching model. Um, I wonder if you could tell me how you see the relevance of what you've just described, communities of practice, to the process of training teachers. Well, first of all, by training teachers, you are inviting them into a community of practitioners that happens at multi -lev multiple levels of scale, right? So you could say that there is a, maybe a vague world community of teachers at a slight, fairly vague notion of a community of practice, which becomes more and more concrete as you go down levels of scale, you know? Yes. 
So I guess in Australia, there is perhaps more of a sense of like, yeah, I'm a teacher in Australia and we, we share certain curricular demands and so on and so forth. And, uh, and then perhaps, I don't know, in Western Australia or in Perth, there is a more specific set of demands that, 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 that and it eventually one would hope, but it doesn't always happen that even in a school or even for a grade level or for a, 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 a specific uh, uh, subject, there are communities of practice that really work closely together. Uh, but you can see the practice kind of like, the practice and the community defining each other differently at different levels of scale. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Would you, would you say, if you thought about institutions around the world that you know that have focused on teacher education would you say there are some unis that are really have really grasped the concept of community of practice well and they've got um they've got that embedded into their their culture well in other words are there particular unis that you would recommend that i would get in touch with uh if i want to develop that this concept within our teacher training? Huh. You know, I don't work in a school of education. Yes. And I, I, so the, the closest probably that I could recommend, but it's probably the University of Hong Kong. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what is the person who was doing this work? Um, huh. Her name escapes me right now. But I could, because I visited there, she invited me and I visited it there. And actually she wrote a book about community, uh, about school university partnerships. Yes. Fantastic. And, I will look that up. Yeah, no, she, and, and, and she, she was very good. Actually, when I, when I ended up going to Hong Kong to give a talk uh, and a workshop at her place, she was no longer doing that work because she had moved up in the university hierarchy. But she was, she was then applying that to other areas, uh, to, to other subjects. Sure. So that, 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 that was, I, I thought that was very inspiring, very interesting. Okay. And leaping off from that, uh, in my studies of, of this whole concept, uh, mm -hmm. I gather that UK has moved the center of gravity away from the unis to be the responsibility of the schools to train the teachers. Um, do you feel that's the logical conclusion of a community of practice which actually is owned now by the school community? Um, and where does that leave the unis? Um, and as you say, I mean, I need to talk to this lady from Hong Kong yeah well i mean in the uk frankly it's a it's a it's a conservative agenda that is driving that process okay so we have to be we have to take it with a grain of salt it's not a theoretical agenda okay <laughs> it, it, it it is it is a it is a conservative agenda you mean with money in mind Saving well with money in mind and with sort of local control in mind and so so yeah you have to take it uh, you see, communities of practice, especially at low level of scale, their problem is that they are very local. So we, we cannot glorify communities of practice. Now, I think it would be great if schools had communities of practice, active, dynamic communities of practice locally, that new teachers could could apprentice into yes. I think that would be fantastic if that if that happened that would not subsume universities having a role you see what i mean yes so i think we should not pit one against the other and yeah. think either or on the contrary a local community if it if it functioned well would benefit greatly from having a relationship with the university yeah you know yeah yeah the, uh, 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 the problem if you're a teacher in a school 
for 20 years, you are really good, but you, you, all you know is your school, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think universities have, have a lot to contribute mm -hmm. in, this, yes. in this scale issue, you know what I mean? Yeah, so it's not one or the other, it's both. Yes, it's both reinforcing each other. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Now you touched on there, if the, the young teacher who's coming into teaching, if they could connect to a really vibrant local community. Yeah. Um, I'm interested in what you would say if you had that student um, to have a little chat with, how would you encourage them to get the most out of that community? Oh, by participating actively in it, contributing what they can. I mean, you see, a community has multiple functions, right? One is to develop the practice. So for me, an active community of teachers is a community where teachers are engaged in developing their practice as teachers. Okay? So <laughs> they're almost like a, a little action learning, action research group, right? Yes. Working on themselves, reflecting, uh, reading papers, really working to, to have the best possible practice. Yeah. That's the function of the community. But another function of a community is also to be a place where newcomers can be induced into that practice. Okay. So, so there is a reproduction function in a community over generations of members. Okay. As long as they appreciate that and they don't see the newcomers as annoying, inexperienced youngsters. True. And they are annoying, inexperienced youngsters. But, but also, first of all, you know, I think that in many professionals, there's a pride in the profession. Yes. And the pride in reproducing the profession. Yes. Right? And I think that it is not in the interest of any real self-respecting professionals to have around bumbling youngsters who don't know what they're doing. So I think it's in, if you think of a community of practice within the school that is really, that really wants to make the school as good as it can be. Yes. And it is there also in their interest that those newcomers yeah. uh, achieve competence as, as quickly as possible. Yes. So, so it's not in your interest if you are a senior yeah. uh, teacher in a school to have youngsters who don't know what they're doing. Sure. I think. But Wonderful. Course, Lovely. Look, can I move I on to... Process. Yeah. Can I move on to another area? Um, yeah. You write about um, cultural knowledge and the acquisition of... Or the... Yeah, the acquisition of cultural knowledge when you're in a community. Mm -hmm. um, I was really challenged by the importance of that, whereas, if you like, the traditional uni would be focusing on have you got the content, have you got the competencies and the skills mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. pedagogies all sorted out of mm -hmm. context. Mm -hmm. um, could you talk a bit about the, the balance between those two, the imbibing of a local culture versus great pedagogy? Well, I mean, <laughs> you know, a local culture is super important, but again, we cannot idealize it. You see, I, I've seen, I've, I've seen so many local communities that are dysfunctional. So, you see, a, a community of practice is not this ideal thing. You know, local practices can be. Yeah. can become productive. There's nothing essentially good That's right. about local practice. Yeah. At the same time, at the same time, there's nothing inherently good in having a whole bunch of knowledge in your head if you don't know what to do with it. Yes. You know? Yes. And so again, it's, it's not either or. Yeah. You know? And I, I know some communities mm -hmm. where to be a member, you, even in, in, in businesses, like communities of practice of engineers, 
if you be a member, you need to take the training 101, right? Because they don't want to waste their time telling you what's already known. Yeah. Okay? They want to work with you on the advanced problem, on the difficult thing that, they, that excites them. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so, yeah. So, and at the same time, I think, as research evolves, it is to local communities advantage to have students who have just learned the, the more the most recent research. It, it is it is really a, a win win in some sense, yeah. you know, if the right balance can be found. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um I'm coming into land. Um you write about um the uh identity as a teacher the teacher's yeah. identity yeah. and i think talking to my students one of the the huge challenges that they see that's miles away you know i'm so green i'm so inexperienced <sighs> when am i really ever going to know that i'm a teacher mm -hmm. um do you it, can you speak a bit about that identity identification if you like well i mean identification is broader in the sense that it's broader than practice in the sense that you can identify with the vocation of being a teacher and 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 the beauty in this idea of helping youngsters find who they are and and and, and develop a competence in the world right uh then there is the practice the practice of it and so the two need to connect mm -hmm. and so when we talk about identity as essential an essential dimension of learning we mean these two need to connect right you know? yeah yeah so yes i think it is really Im important to recognize that it is very difficult for a university to <laughs> provide an, a teacher identity to students when there's not a chance to, <laughs> you know, to forge this identity on the anvil of practice. Yeah. See? Yeah. In the end, that's, that's where it is forged, is on the anvil of practice, right? Yes. And so, so if, if I was in your position, I would, I would search for these opportunities yeah. to expose students early yeah. to the anvil of practice in a, in a, in a non-threatening way, you know? Lovely. So I don't know how to do that, you know? But so, I, know, I know that in medical education, for instance, many people have used the theory to, to talk about the formation of medical identity, right. you know? You know, and, 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 and medical education also has this problem of the tension between the years that you spend just in courses and then all of a sudden you find yourself in a ward, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, uh, but uh, uh, a colleague of mine who, who's used this theory to, to look at, at the medical apprenticeship, if you will, uh, uh, does um, report students feeling that they were a doctor before they were a doctor see because yes. they remember the community and they were involved in the death of a patient and then in the reflection after that that death yeah. uh, of the team, medical team kind of reflecting have, have we done everything we could yeah. and so on and so forth how, how are we dealing with the emotion of it and yeah. so on and so forth so this this moment of being involved in that, 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 that young woman who wanted to become a doctor, she, she felt that she was a doctor. But she was not a doctor yet, <laughs> officially, but she felt like she was a doctor yeah. because she was involved in, in the whole chain of events, you know? Yeah. So to give, to give, to find ways to cheat. And sometimes teaching is cheating, it's just, an anagram of it, right? You want to give people the experience of it before they before they are it, you know? Yes. <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah, I do. How to do that? I don't know. You'd have to be imaginative. But that's that's the beauty of of doing research in, in teacher education. It's like yeah. 
you need to you need to find ways to give uh, aspiring teachers an experience of, of being a teacher without being one. Yes. And I think that's really that's an how, interesting challenge. Yeah. Well, that's that's arguably a definition of a community of practice. That's right, exactly. Right. Of a community of practice that is good at at involving newcomers. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Look, Etienne, you've been amazing. Um, are there any other reflections you might have on our chat in terms of, ah, oh, I wish I'd said that to Jim, or okay. why didn't you ask me about that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Anything else? Oh, no. Yeah. Oh. No, actually, actually, I think the conversation went where I was hoping that it, that it would go, yeah, touching on issues of practice, identity, but also not ideal, ide idealizing those things. What, what, what I find sometimes is that there is either an ideal, idealization of research and, you know, like the formal research and this idea that all oh, teachers don't know, what, don't know what they're doing, but the researchers can tell them, to an idealization of practice. Yeah. Well, the teachers know everything because they are in the practice with the kids and everything in the school. But neither of them is true. Sure. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think it's wrong to see, to think that teachers, that researchers can tell teachers what to do. But it is wrong also to idealize yeah. local practice. Yeah. You know? and, and, and so we have to find that, that boundary between those two practices that becomes productive for both. Yeah. Are you optimistic about education? School education? I don't know what you call optimistic. Uh -huh. I mean, we've had reform after reform after reform, and Australia copies England or copies America, and it's mm. as if it was never any good in the first place. Well, first of all, there are lots of wonderful teachers doing wonderful things, mm. you know. Incredible, actually, you know. The problem that education really has is that it's it's caught in a political wasp nest, you know. It it's a very difficult. See, if if you are the CEO of a company, as long as you don't do anything illegal and and you make a profit, they don't care what your what your learning theory is. Yes. As long as it works, you know. Yes. In schools. It's more complicated, you know. Everybody has their idea, you know. Yeah. This, is, this is how I learned. Don't try anything new on my kid. And <laughs> so it's, 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 it's very complicated. But yeah. ask me, I think most schools are built on the wrong learning theory, the transmission learning theory, the, th the idea that, that learning is the transmission of certainty between someone who knows to someone who doesn't. And I think it's, it's simply the wrong learning theory for the 21st century, if you ask me. Sure. You know? Wow, I did. <laughs> Look, Etienne, thank you so much for your time. Yeah. You've been amazing. Very good. All right. God bless. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.